one of my grapevines this year. Don't know if you can see all of the little baby grapes that are on there. This thing is loaded this year. Of course, I say that every year and then the birds end up eating most of it. But, uh, definitely more grapes this year than I've probably ever seen ever before. This is another grape that I just planted this year. This is a Mars grape. This one over here is a seeded purple grape. And I honestly don't even remember the variety. I think it's the Muscadin. But it's got seeds in it, and it's almost a black purplish color. This is a Mars grape that full size is only 8 foot, and I plan on just going up the side of this. This one will probably end up growing over and down this side. So I'm going to train this one to go up this side. And up there, I've got four more grapes to plant. Uh, that's what I made all of the concrete forms for. And I just haven't put them together yet. I mean, here it is already June, and I started making those back in, I don't know, March or April, and I ain't even put them together yet. Uh, the deer destroyed all of my peas, so I just pulled them up and threw them. In a pile in place they also ate the tops out of most of my pepper plants which is really unusual for deer and they also ate most of the leaves off my sweet potatoes <laughs> um, there's deer poop right there there's some deer poop over there there's deer poop up there there are actually deer tracks the uh Last year is the first time I ever had the deer get in my garden. And because of the cancer, I was just like, eh, whatever. But, um, I put these seven foot T-posts in. And then this field fence and the chicken wire to keep out things like rabbits and small animals. But the deer are jumping this fence. So I'm going to have to run some barbed wire across there to stop that. I put it on my to-do list. This was, um, <laughs> the weeds kind of took this over, but this was radishes and carrots that the deer literally just pulled up out of the ground. Over here I had some broccoli and some other stuff that the weeds took over. Up here, uh, the deer also ate all of the red clover blooms and all the leaves off this red clover and somehow or another a lot of my onions also got uprooted it's just not been a good year for the garden um, and also most of my garlic is not looking very good now so I don't know It's kind of funny that some things are doing really well and then other things the animals got. But we walked down here. Uh, I got a bunch of melons that need to go in this bed. I ain't even got planted yet. My asparagus didn't do very good this year. Um, My blueberries, though, are doing great, or at least they was a couple days ago when I checked. Hopefully the birds ain't got to them yet. Uh, looks like a lot less blueberries than there was. <laughs> My fig tree is booming in growth, but I don't see any starting to form yet on this 
I'm probably going to pinch these pretty soon because usually I wait until there's five new sets. One, two, three, four. Yeah, these can be, these can actually be pinched now. I might maybe do that later on today. When you pinch a fig tree, once it gets five new leaves, it'll, it'll force it to fruit. But you can see like all the way down through here, where there should be figs, there's nothing. There should have been figs forming on all of these brown branches. And I don't know if the frost got them or what happened, but all the fruiting buds seem to be gone. Over here are some more blueberries. More blueberries. more blueberries i tell you it actually looks like the birds are starting to knock these out pretty good more blueberries my fig that is up by the uh i i keep one one of my figs in a pot and there's actually another fig over there. Let's walk over and look at this other fig. And I also got some pawpaw trees over there too I want to check out. They had blooms on them earlier. And I saw a fruit set. And then I went back and checked. I went back and checked where the fruit set was at. There's my pet rabbit that got loose. He's out here still loose. I can catch him now and put him back in the chicken or the rabbit hutch, but he knows how to get out. So it's just kind of like he'll just be out again tomorrow. So it don't really make any sense to keep catching him and sticking him in there if he's just gonna get out. Oh, that felt good across the legs. I need to come down here. I usually weed through here, but I just ain't had time to get to it yet. This is my other fig tree. I'm not seeing any fruit on it either. And one, two, it can also be pinched. One of my pawpaws. This one didn't have any buds on it. So I know there won't be any fruit on this one. This one did have buds on it. But I didn't see fruit set. So it's out of the question. This fruit tree, or this pawpaw tree, is the one that come back to life. I just walked into a spider web. That always feels good. This one come back to life. So my camera shut off because temperature. Anyways, I was saying this pawpaw come back to life. I may have already posted a video on this. This is the main branch that the deer uprooted a couple years ago. I think, I think it's even still got the old top laying around here somewhere. I don't remember what I did with it now. Anyways. Here's what happened. This was about six feet tall and the deer broke it off like two foot above the ground. Three, maybe four years ago now. And right after that happened, it sent up these three shoots out of the ground. And I wasn't sure because deer normally don't bother pawpaw trees. But I went ahead and let all three shoots go because... You know, I didn't want to lose the tree. Anyways, this branch, the main branch, never did anything until this year. And then this year, all of a sudden, this one branch right here starts growing out of the top of it. And this little side shoot right here also. So if I move like the... You can kind of see. 
it's already grown like two more feet and i'm tickled to death because i love pawpaws and i've got six varieties of pawpaws out here but they're only about five years old and normally when you plant a pawpaw tree it takes them about eight years before they will set fruit however this one had a bunch oh my i don't see it now oh my well i thought i was going to get to enjoy some pawpaws this year but now i don't see the fruit that's horrible it was actually fruit set the the fruit was starting to form there was actually oh wait there it is so there was about eight places that had buds and the only ones that got fruit set were those two right there so yeah now there's a funny story about this i'll tell you here in a minute this is another paw paw tree um this one didn't have any buds on it so it's never had a fruit set but back to this one so when i first got cancer there's a fruit right there starting to form. When I first got cancer, though, um, you know, unless, unless you've been told something like that, you really can't understand, like, what your mind goes through. Like, you, you would never understand it unless you've been there. But, you know, when I first found out, I spent many nights laying in the bed like, why now? I am so close to reaching all the goals that I had set for myself to have done within six years. And so close to the end and finish line that I could almost touch the finish line and then i get cancer and it delays me by a year so i'm laying in bed like talking to god like why now and i kind of made the joke that you know i i can't die now because i got too much work to do on the homestead yet and i've not got to taste the pawpaws or the raspberries. Now the blueberries I've gotten a few off of. And a few of the figs. But not really like a huge production you know. Like I really wanted everything to just be booming. And me to get like. Enough to can and enough to store. Like prove out my. I'm going to grow 80% of everything that I eat. And anyways like everything seems to be doing great this year. Like the pawpaws are actually going to fruit three years sooner than they should have and i just ate a bunch of raspberries earlier today and uh the other fig tree that's up on the porch let me pause this video and i'll just show you that to you actually let me talk about something on the way back up there so the other thing was too i told a friend of mine i was like you know out of everything I do on the homestead, the one thing that I enjoy the most is beekeeping. And I had two hives that overwintered and literally got five swarms this year. You need to go, dragonfly, because bees do not like you. Um... Anyways, so I made a comment to a friend of mine. I was like, you know, I think next year I'm going to try to like do like 10 or 20 beehives. And that was before I caught all the swarms earlier this year. And now I'm already up to 10 beehives. So like 
there's kind of your sign, right? <laughs> like, there's just been so much weird stuff going on. You know, I got cancer. I laid in bed many nights talking to God. And there are people on my Facebook. I see them comment all the time about, you're God this, you're God that. Man, I'm telling you, you better watch what you're saying. Because I have seen some stuff in my past. And I'll link to a video right now. I'll link to the video where I was about, about ready to die from starvation and dehydration. And I asked God for help and got it that same day. And if I wouldn't have gotten it, it could have been a lot different story. So anyways, this is my other fig tree. See figs all the way down it. Like I think I counted around 28 figs on this tree yesterday. And I mean, if the blooms are any indication what my uh, key limes are going to do, and my lemons are just booming over here, and look at all the blooms that are on it also, and there's just already a whole bunch of lemons started forming this year. I think I counted around 12 lemons, not counting the ones that are still blooming. But So the figs are doing great, the lemons are doing great, the key limes are doing great. I got gooseberries this year. Um, right? See, look. Gooseberry, gooseberry, gooseberries. You know, it's another thing that they've, they've kind of like bloomed and set fruit way earlier than they should have so anyways what i'm really getting at is i laid in bed and i told god i wanted to enjoy my homestead the way it's intended to be and these were my plans and i still had work to do and then i got all this craziness happening with like all the bee swarms I caught after I made the comment that, you know, I kind of want to get heavier into beekeeping and boom, whole bunch of swarms. <laughs> I raised bees out here now for five or six years and this is actually the first year I've ever caught swarms on this homestead. And I got five this year. You know, all the fruit trees that are blooming early, two or three years earlier than they should have. The bees, now the garden hasn't been doing too great, but that's because the deer got in there and destroyed it, and then the weeds took over, and, you know, my tomatoes are still looking great. Oh, another one. My banana plant. It should, the, the bigger stalk should actually fruit this year, but there are literally one, two, three, four, five, six new child bananas come up over the winter normally it's one or two <laughs> my tomato plants I just got set in the ground a couple weeks ago I think I did a video on that they've already grown about oh two feet in the last two weeks some gotten closer to three feet you know the blackberries have a lot of a lot of fruit the plums have a lot of fruit the peaches have a lot of fruit. The raspberries had a lot of fruit. You know, what didn't fruit this year was the apples and the cherries and the pears. But everything else fruited and fruited well. And even like, even like the elderberries that normally take two years, two to three years, they have fruit on them. I planted four elderberries right here. Normally it takes three years to get elderberries. Right there's elderberries. Right there's more elderberries. Um, I saw more on one of these plants. This one. This one has some and so does that one. So three out of four elderberries all fruited two years sooner than they should have. I just find that amazing. Anyways, I'm up to 11 minutes on the second half of the video. The first half of the video 
It's probably long by the time I combine them and edit it down. It's going to be super long. All I'm saying is, all I really want to say is, you know, I'm out here trying to live a good, quiet, simple Christian life. And I don't ask God for much very often. But every time I've ever asked, I've always gotten what I asked for. And I know some people will ask for like crazy things like, uh, oh, I got bills due. Could you, you know, find a way for me to make extra money or, you know, could, could you make, allow me to find $10,000 laying on the ground? Y'all's crazy. Ask for simple things. Ask to have a good crop year. Ask to have some good weather. Ask for simple things. Don't ask for stupid stuff. Money don't never buy happiness. Let me tell you, I know for a fact. Got plenty of money. Got money trees over there. Just growing on the trees. And uh, don't necessarily mean you're going to be happy though. So, kind of the message I wanted to get at was, everything's doing great, I'm just not able to keep up with it, to be honest with you, the, the uh, garden got taken over by weeds, I'm just way slower than I used to be after the cancer treatment. Finally starting to gain some weight, I put on 6 pounds in the last 12 days. Only thing I did different was... After trying for like three months of eating way more calories than I was burning and I just kept losing weight and I was like, you know, let's do some really light workouts but use really high resistance or high weights. And man, I've been packing on the weight. Six pounds in 12 days. That's kind of, actually it's a little bit better than what I do when I bulk. Normally I could put on about four pounds a week. So four pounds every seven days and I'm at, well, it comes out about right, I guess. By the time I get to 12 days, that would be uh, 8 pounds. By the time I get to 14 days, that would be 8 pounds. And I'm at 6 pounds at 12 days. So, yeah, it comes out about right. Anyways, I'm still rattling. As always, thanks for watching. If you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, go ahead and hit that. I post all kinds of crazy stuff about my homestead. Lots, around 70 fruit trees, hundreds of berries, 10 beehives, goats, chickens, rabbits. And uh, I even post stuff about my personal life and my cancer treatment. So go ahead and like and subscribe to this channel. As always, God bless you. God bless your families. God bless your homesteads. Thank you.